What's good, everyone? Aggie Coach here. All right, man. So, early Saturday morning, up early. Uh, got a huge project that we're getting ready to do. You guys recall from the last video, right, where uh, we have all 31 true scale uh, fields made. And so, I'm going to share with you guys um, what my plan is. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking. Um, how we build the boards. So I am at the beginning of another board building project and I have to build the frame for the board. Um, I have the playing surface here, which I'll go over with you guys so you guys can kind of understand um, what it is that we're dealing with. Uh, and then all of the materials that you need to build a board and then I'm also going to do a comparison um, Later on today, I'm going to be meeting with um, coach Kenshin uh, On the line so we can go through the process of putting the frame together um, so before I uh, before I get to framing it up this video I really just want to kind of go through the pieces and go through the comparison and really kind of give you guys a an idea of what we're dealing with here um, because this is this is a huge project um, I'll go through the wiring and everything later in another video that'll have to be a separate video from this one but this is I know Bryson all you guys um, are interested in how to build a board I'm going to say this to you guys, and I want you guys to listen really, really closely here. You need to go to El Toro's website, uh, to his YouTube channel. I'm going to post it in the description below. He goes through several videos. I believe it's four videos of how to construct your, your frame, how to do the wiring, how to do the motors. Um, how to do all of the measurements, what materials to use. It is extremely detailed. And that is where I suggest you go to learn how to do this because um, Tory Bliss has been building scale boards a lot longer than I have. This is my second scale board that I'm building and this one is even larger than the first one that I did. As a matter of fact, the first one that I did um, is was is 60 we did for the fatic national championship for season two um and it is 60 by uh 60 by 28 and a half um it is significantly smaller than this one um this one is a true to life uh actual true skill board for uh, player to field ratio which i'm going to go over and i'm going to show you guys this one is 66 and a half by 33 and a half. This one is massive. Um, it is going to be a huge build. And I have 31 fields. <laughs> I also have uh, a few new teams that I'm gonna be adding. Um, so I also have a bunch of new teams that I need to paint. I'm gonna be doing the University of Maryland. I'm gonna be adding them. I'm gonna be adding Air Force and Army. I'm gonna be adding Clemson. I'm gonna be adding Appalachian State. Uh, there's a few others that we're going to be bringing in the Georgia Bulldogs. We're going to be bringing in Georgia. There's a bunch of projects, new projects that we have going on, a bunch of work that has to get done. Notre Dame has to get done. Michigan has to get done. It's a lot of work. And I'm thankful this time that I have a lot of help um, <laughs> with doing these projects because I definitely couldn't have done it alone. Um, my good friend Tori Bliss is doing the decals for me for all of the teams and um, and Coach Kenshin has provided the field covers, um, the field cover printouts, the field cover designs and the frame for the board. And I went out and I grabbed the rest of the materials that we're going to need, including all of the supplies and the tools. Um, the surfaces and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of work that actually goes into this. So I'm gonna just kind of break this down and share with you guys what we have here so you can kind of understand everything that's gonna go into this design um, because it is, it is indeed a lot of work. So first, let's go over to my small board so I can show you the scale that we're dealing with so you can get a better idea of what I mean. So 
let's come over here. This is my small board. This board is a two foot by four foot board, okay? Uh, I made a bunch of these. I made like 12 of these. Uh, this board right here is 24 inches wide and it is 48 inches long, okay? But the problem is that the players are nine feet tall. For example, let's take uh, Nishan Nagata here. I'm going to take him off his base. Okay. One yard is three feet. Two yards is six feet. Three yards is nine feet. So let's see how tall this guy is. So I'm going to lay him on the 25 yard line. We're going to do it both ways so you can see. So right here, he's 12 feet tall. Right? If we flip it around this way, I realize that there's a gap here. So that's also another problem. There's a gap right here. So there's this empty space right here is also a problem. I mean, it's not a problem for most people, but it's a problem for me. Okay. So even if we exclude this gap right here, as you guys can see, he's still one, two, three yards long, just over three yards long by helmet, right? So he's still over nine feet tall. And then when you stand him up and you put his base at the 20 yard line, his base extends almost three yards. So basically when this guy moves, every time he moves, right, he's uh, just standing up, he's giving himself three yards. You see what I mean? So you basically have a player if the ball, if the ball is spotted at the 20 yard line and you put your player on the 20, his base is taking a lot of space. Um, like I said, for a lot of people, this is nothing. This is not a problem. Um, it's just the way that my brain works. So I'm looking for something a little more true scale. Um, so my goal is to make the board to play a ratio scale correctly. So on the new board, he's not going to be... He'll be just over him being one of the taller players, like six foot two, six foot three. He'll be just over two yards long, which is which is perfect, which is correct, not three. So really, we only dealing with an inch, or an eighth of an inch or so, right? But um, I wanna I wanted to make that scale uh, a little more to my liking. So again, guys, this is just my personal taste. It doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong for what you're doing. It doesn't mean that. You know, what you're doing is not correct or anything like that. You know, it's whatever you like is what you like. You play however you play. You know, that's what it is. It's just for me, I want to do something different. So, right. So it's just personal taste. That's all. There really is no right or wrong to this. Okay. So, um, so now let me show you guys what's going to happen when we scale this thing. Let me show you. So let's switch back over here. Um, so you guys, excuse the mess. This is my workspace. Um, this is my uh, my game room. This this is my man cave. So the first thing that I'm gonna be doing, which I'm really excited about, is fixing my sidelines. So as you can see on on my board here, on my small game board, I don't have very much sideline. Um, I have, you know, just right here, I have about two inches, right, of sideline. So it causes my players to run the length of the board. As you can see, my players on the sideline have to pretty much run the length of the board all the way down, which in, co in college football and professional football just doesn't happen. Um, there are rules preventing players from being all the way down there in the end zone, right? So that's one thing. The other thing is I want to be able to put benches. Uh, I want to be able to put the Gatorade jugs. I want to be able to do um, like the training bikes. Let me see if I can show you guys. See, this is a training bike, right? This is um, for players to help with rehabilitation for injuries and stuff like that. 
right? I want to be able to do that. See here, right? This is um, this is where the when the players go to see the athletic trainers. I have rules in the Fat Eight system for athletic trainers, which I can't use because my board is too small. So that's another thing, stuff like this, right? Another thing that I envisioned was being able to put have the players on the field like when I do rain I don't know if you guys notice but I do a lot of a lot of weather games right when I do rain I want I don't want to play I want to be able to show the players on the sideline sitting in the benches with their ponchos on or standing on the sideline you know with their overcoats on and on the cold snowy days and and um and on rainy days and I, I want it to look more realistic and so that's one of the problems that I'm having right now is everything that I envision like my board is cluttered if I want to do like my yard markers for example look at this see how close this is um see it's just really cluttered so um so you know guys this is a personal preference for me so this time around I'm doing a true skill board, like an actual size uh, player to fill ratio. And at the same time, I'm giving myself five inches on both sides of the field, which is going to allow me that realistic space that I need to put the teams on the sideline and not have them running all the way down the field and be able to put all of the things on the sideline training equipment, boxes, jugs for Gatorade, the benches, the, the the training bikes, the fans that you see on the sideline on hot days and heaters on cold days. All of that kind of stuff is stuff that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring that, that authentic feel. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm um, upgrading my sideline material. So as you guys can see right here, this right here, this right here is um, is grass, but um, for War Games models, but it's um, kind of flaky and it's really flat. Um, the new thing that I'm using is more like carpet. So that's this material right here. So that's what I bought this for. And the good thing is this grass right here is really realistic looking. Um, with, as you can see, uh, it's thick, how it feels. So it will deaden vibration. So I don't have to worry about my players on the sideline running up and down the field when I don't want them moving. Um, you can get this from Lowe's. This, this material only cost me $20, $19. I got this whole roll. This is going to be for, this is going to last me. I, I'll never have to buy any more of this. This will last me for any project that I want to do. So I'm with this, I'm pretty much set. For $20, I'm set really for life. I'll never have to buy any more of that. Um, that's plenty. That's a six by eight right there for $20 at Lowe's. You can't beat that. So that's my new sideline material. Now, for my field surface, I decided to go with something else. I decided to go with... Uh, with what's called tempered brown hardwood instead of metal. And the reason that I decided to go with the tempered brown hardwood, for one, you can get a six foot by four foot, um, you can get a six foot by four foot uh, piece of it, similar to this, but it's six by four instead of six by eight. Um, I'm sorry. You get an eight by four, that's what it is. You can get an eight by four piece instead of an eight by six. You get an eight by four piece at Lowe's and then you just have them cut it to the size that you want. Cost me $7, guys, $7. Um, and I really love playing on the hardwood because it it absorbs vibration well and it, and it, and it slightly deadens the vibration all at the same time. So you end up with players that don't jump off the board uh, or fall over very much. So like, for example, this Ohio State field right here is tempered hardwood. Um, this is tempered hardwood material right here that I'm using, as you can see. 
for this board. Okay. It's tempered hardwood. It's not metal. And the players run really smooth on the surface. As you can see, I really like this surface. They run really smooth on this surface. So, as you can see, the players don't jump all over the place. They don't fall over very much. Um, it's, it's really smooth running. So that's another thing about it that I like. Now this piece right here is 65 and a half long by 33 and a half wide. And then the pieces over here that you guys can see the strips, that's gonna be my sideline. So that right there is gonna be the sidelines. And then this right here, I'm doing something different. This right here that you see right here, this metal, this is aluminum. Um, this and the pieces over here on the couch as well and those are the tools and everything that i bought um that i'm gonna need all of this stuff came out of those boxes back there um i gotta clean all of that stuff up once i get finished with this project um this is gonna be my new frame my new frame is actually gonna be metal um so so right now these are all the materials that i have that i've collected um, for this project so you guys will get an opportunity to uh, see this project you know I'll, I'll talk about it I'll try to document some of it just to kind of give you an idea of the amount of work that goes into this to actually put this together but this new field is going to be massive and I'm gonna have 31 of those so I know it is crazy I know my wife think I've lost my mind um, to do 31 of these. I'll have 31 of these playing surfaces. I'll have one for each uh, one for each team. So I'll be able to switch out one playing surface and put another playing surface down inside of my frame. So I'm making my frame modular. So when I want to switch from one home field to another home field, all I have to do is just pop the motors off, which will be easy because I came up with a system for being able to quickly remove motors and quickly put motors back down um, using a magnetic system that I'm working on. So um, so we're gonna work it out, man. I just wanted to share this with you. I know this was a long video, um, but I wanted you guys to just kind of get an idea of the scope of the project that's getting ready to go down and how much work is gonna be going into this. It's gonna be a lot of work. All right, thank you guys for watching.